Kids who can be model citizens offline can make some big mistakes online. Salima Noon is a sexual health educator who helps young people know where and when to draw the line. Uh, to text rather than sext, uh, be sweet rather than tweet, perhaps. She's the co-creator and facilitator of Go Girl. It is my pleasure to welcome Salima Noon back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Morning, Fanny. Nice to see you again. You too. So still running Go Girl workshops? Yes. Actually, last year we made some changes to the program. It's, it's iGirl now to bring it up to, you know. Oh the modern times mm -hmm. um, and we've also added a component to include internet safety which reflects some of the things that we're seeing in schools mm -hmm. and apparently you're seeing a lot of texting we, we know are. that but also a lot of sexting so define it for me well sexting is a term that's used in the media right now to refer to when people are sending uh, text messages of a sexual nature to each other on their phones or even sending sexual pictures to each other on their phones. And unfortunately, it's something that I'm seeing way too often at schools, not just at the high school level, but it's become a concern at the elementary grade six and seven mm. level. So grade six and seven, how old? 12, 12. 11, 12, 13, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and when you're 11, what on earth are you sexting about? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult, you know, um, unfortunately, People at that age, I think, are having trouble distinguishing between public and private. And they really do see their phones and what they're sending to their friends on it, or peers in mm -hmm. general, as private. But they're not realizing that it's actually the most public domain we have. And the, internet. the friend can send it on. And, and not send thinking, it on. Exactly. So with our bodies and sexuality being so, so private, and the internet being so public, the two aren't going together. But unfortunately, what we're seeing is girls, and it's mostly girls, um, doing things to get attention or to doing things they feel they have to in order for someone to like them. Um, for example, I was recently dealing with a situation where two grade seven girls took some pictures of themselves at a sleepover and sent them to a boy in their class they were crushing on. Oh, and what so I find, themselves in their clothes? No, Or in topless. their pajamas? Topless. Okay, topless. And what I find particularly disturbing about that is what, why did they think they needed to do that? Mm. I don't think they did that because they think their bodies are so hot and they want the whole world to see them. You get what I'm saying? Right. I think they did it because they felt in some way that was what they needed to do to get attention or to get approval or really? to be seen as beautiful or sexy. So some and I think peer that's pressure. the problem. For sure that's the problem. Now it all girls problem. obviously aren't doing it. So as a parent? Absolutely not. And I, and I don't want to diminish the positive influence that mm -hmm. this technology has had on our kids. I mean, if we think back to even when you and I were growing up and when you were parenting your daughters, mm -hmm. this is something we did not even, it wasn't even on our radar. No. You know? I mean, we were sending love notes in class. Exactly. But it's just changed how preteens and teens deal with each other. It's changed the nature of their relationships. We're seeing relationships in high school, for example, progressing at a much faster rate because it's easier to write something than it is to say it. Mm. And it's easier to text someone than, like when we were growing up, pick up the phone and call and risk that his or her dad was going to answer the phone. So relationships are progressing at a much faster level and understandably parents have a lot of questions. Sure. They, they want to know, how can I help the internet be a positive influence in my child's life? How can I teach my child to make smart decisions when it comes to this? Sure, and if I was 12, 13, 14, texting or sexting, I wouldn't want my parents to read it. Of course not. But on the flip side is parents have a responsibility to monitor what their kids are looking at on the internet, what they're posting on Facebook, what they are texting their friends, um, so that they can guide them and teach them to make responsible mm -hmm. choices. And really, parents need to help their kids understand that when it comes to the internet, there is no privacy till you're 18. True. Oh, well, when you're 85, there's no privacy. <laughs> you know, I mean, what you put on Facebook is what you put on Facebook. And, and when you're 16, you put something racy on Facebook, and then you try to get a job when you're 25, somebody yeah. still probably has that picture you know of what? you without your clothes on or you That's in a compromised position. Right. And the stakes position. are too high. So if young people want and need their privacy, absolutely. Right. 
they can have privacy in the form of writing their feelings down in a journal or privacy in their own space in their house, for example, their bedroom. But when it comes to the internet, mm -hmm. parents need to be offering guidance. Well, somebody wrote, and perhaps it was you, that texting is not just a two-way <coughs> street, it's a multi-lane highway. Uh, Absolutely. You know, write it, send it, write it, send it. Yeah. And what if somebody writes it about you? How do you prevent that? You don't. Yeah, and when it comes to cyberbullying, it, I mean, it, it's taken bullying to a whole new level mm -hmm. because a few years ago, if someone was having a tough time at school with their peers, they could come home and that would be their safe haven. But now, with computers and Facebook and email and MSN and texting, there's no escape from it. Right. And so we're seeing the level of bullying, the nature of bullying change. Mm -hmm, for sure. Are boys sending uh, pictures of their body parts to girls or are they sending them to other boys? Boys will be boys, kind of. Thing. No, I haven't, in my work anyway, mm -hmm. I haven't come across any situations okay. where boys are sending pictures of body parts so just to boys girls. or girls. And so it is an, an issue mm. um, when we're looking at girls. And, and it's, it's a serious one because we need to look at why is it that they're doing this. Right, and same the in, the in the gay, lesbian, it. bisexual world. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. Mm. What is it that is causing people to think that their bodies and mm -hmm. their sexuality is not private. Right. Well, I think it's naivete a little bit, but if you have a parent or a teacher who uh, tells you not to, you're aware, but you know, kids are kids. Exactly. So Who's how are we... Who's ever going to know, we and said. And that's the thing, teachers are, are talking about this with their students. Parents are talking about it. And mm -hmm. it's hard for parents because, again, we didn't grow up with this stuff, and so really we are visitors in this world sure. of the internet. So parents are talking, but how do we translate the talking into their behavior? Mm -hmm. And to some extent, we need to give our kids the skills and trust them to make smart decisions and let them know that we trust them. Right. I know I had to learn to text so I could keep up with my, my children who are older, but if I text, they they get back to me immediately. If I call them, it could be a few hours. Yeah. So it See, is... That's how they communicate. It's, it's how many of us are communicating, mm -hmm. as you know, instant, email, all of that. What about lo the legality of this, the legal consequences of this? Well, there are many. Um, recently, I was called to a situation at a school where a 12-year-old boy was facing charges of distribution of child pornography because he had passed pictures that someone sent him to his friends. Pictures of a young girl or yeah. of whom? Yeah, really? young girls. And so did he... Did he think about those legal ramifications mm -hmm. when he did it? No. Did he mean any harm? No. He just thought it was pretty cool that these girls sent these pictures and decided to share the good news mm -hmm. with his friends. Um, mm -hmm. But again, uh, that's a pretty uh, difficult thing to go through, for, especially for sure. a 12-year-old, and something that will affect him for the rest of his life. I but think as it's devastating. you know, it's also difficult to stop it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a 13-year-old walking to school, texting, delete, 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 text, text, text. Yeah, it's very difficult to monitor, but we got to do our best. Mm -hmm. Parents need to not be afraid to set guidelines and boundaries around use of the internet. Um, simple things, you know, having computers in public areas of the home, reserving the right to use their Facebook Facebook passwords, and take a look every now and then if they have reason to believe that they may be sure. involved in something that. Right, but if you're is, a mom and dad on Facebook, you can and you're. Obviously, your child's going to be one of your friends. Yes. You can see what they're posting, and it's quite shocking, even when your kids are older. Yeah. Sometimes but parents to see need what, to have what a they're presence. posting. You'd be amazed at how many parents are not on Facebook, and their kids mm. are. Parents need to have a presence on Facebook mm -hmm. so that they can have an idea of exactly what's going on. You know? Sure. But I know that you uh, educate uh, kids in school about sexually transmitted disease and uh, sex in general. Yeah. Uh, protection, all of that. What I, yeah, I Has try. that changed how you're teaching them because of this? Absolutely, Because they know Fanny. so much more today? It really or has. Or they think they know so much more? What's interesting is when I'm working with grade six and seven students, for example, and we talk about some of the different types of sexual activities and the related responsibilities and consequences, they tell me internet sex is a type of sex. 
So that means, excuse me. So for being, add it to the list. <laughs> oh, add it to the list. But what do they mean, internet sex? Is that just sexting, words? Sexting, having sexting, sexual interactions, pictures. using a computer with a webcam or on spy, a Skype, rather. Um, so any kind of sexual interaction using this technology. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is help young people understand, especially in high school, right. that yes, this is just as intimate as any other kind of sexual mm -hmm. activity you might engage in, and it comes with just as many responsibilities. Sure. Uh, wh where's the satisfaction, in it, number one? I guess the, the titillation or, or that kind of thing. And it is safer if you're it in your safer. house. It is safer. You can't get an STI you can't over get your pregnant. cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You can't get pregnant over That's the cell good phone. News. That's, That's the good news. news. So what do you s suggest a parent actually say? You know how our, my parents, anyway, yours probably were ahead of mine, who sit you down and they have the birds and the bees talk. Oh, yeah. And they don't, you know, they don't use real words and they skirt around and it's kind yeah. of embarrassing and all of that. So today, modern age, what do parents computer say? rules, what do you say? I think that parents need to voice to their kids their concerns. Here's why I worry about you mm. having unlimited access to a computer or to a cell phone. Here's what I've heard is an issue among people your age. I trust you to make good decisions, but I want to make sure that you've got the information you need to make those good decisions. Talk about how what you post will affect you for the rest of your life because you can't take it away. Sure. Talk about the long-term consequences, but even the short-term consequences. Mm -hmm. And also, it's important for parents to set, I mean, I know for my own stepdaughter who is 14, I've suggested that before she post anything on Facebook or email or MSN or do anything on her phone, she think about how would I feel if my parents were to read this or see mm. this? And if she's not comfortable with that, then that's her... Sure. That's a good her, litmus test. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. Maybe not appropriate. So mm -hmm. everything you're doing on the computer, pretend that everyone in the world, including your parents, sure. is going to see it. But as you know, uh, teenagers rebel. Yes, they do. They're and they say, make so not your business. I'd yeah. never tell my mother that. I'd never tell my father that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need to pick our battles, too. We need to sure. give our kids some privacy right. and some independence. Eventually, uh, good news for parents, they do tell. You know, when they're like 25 or 30, then you know what was really going <laughs> what on. What was really going on mm -hmm. all those years. Mm -hmm. That's How right. nice to see you again. You too, Fanny. Thank you Thank for having you. me. Thank you. Salima Noon, uh, is it called... Go Girl, your I company. Girl. I, I girl. girl. So it's I Girl, not Go Girl. Go Girl's gone. You're right. Okay, co-creator, facilitator for I Girl.